I think the toughest thing I've had to overcome and still overcome um, is really being taken serious, especially behind the camera. In an interview with career advice organization A Wise Way, film producer and founder of Lonerland Productions Milan Zoe recounts the difficulties she faces at work and on set as a producer being taken seriously by colleagues and co-workers and asserting herself as an authority rather than a commodity. In truth, Zoe's experiences of having to constantly assert herself to prove her worth to others in her same field could be considered lucky as it is difficult to even make it far enough to, in the industry as a woman to even have a workplace to go to. This difficulty is experienced so much so that another female filmmaker, Amy Adrian, created an entire documentary regaling the discriminatory experiences of no less than five other women in the industry in 2018. In the medium of film centered around story crafting and expression, perspective is key. However, when approximately half of all film school graduates are not being heard on the basis of their gender, how can this need for broad perspectives in filmmaking be satisfied? This lecture intends to expand upon the current issues of gender oppression in the film industry, addressing the difficulty women experience in finding work out of film school, the lack of funding given to female-led projects, and the suppression of feminine topics in film writing in not just Hollywood, but the global film industry as expressed in Maria Jansen's 2017 article, Gender Equality in Swedish Film Policy, Radical Interpretations and Unruly Women, and Naomi McDougall Jones's dissertation, What It's Like to Be a Woman in Hollywood. The article we have chosen for this module, Gender Equality in Swedish Film Policy, Radical Interpretations on Unruly Women by Maria Jansen, talks about how Sweden has tried to bridge the gap between men and women in film. When looking into the article, it talks about how they are trying to change the amount of women leading in films. The article goes on to talk about how they would only give funding to films with equal amount of males and females in higher up positions. While women have always faced the trouble of the glass ceiling, I honestly don't think this is the correct way of going about fixing gender inequality. The glass ceiling refers to the fact that it is harder for women to rise in ranks due to history or pre-existing stigmas against women in power. The way that they have it set up, in my opinion, can cause more harm than good. It is likely that in some cases, they have hired women based on the fact that they were women, using them to gain funding. However, there still seems to be benefits to this new system, as the article by Jansen states that there has been an all-time high of 58% of films that have had female directors. This is a good thing because younger generations can be inspired by this type of representation, and that can help dissolve the barrier between men and women in film. While looking for articles, I came across an article titled Gina Davis Damaging Stereotypes on Screen Limit Women's Aspirations by Liz Floyd. The article is primarily about how on screen women are mostly shown as struggling with leadership roles. I find the need to bring this up because if we are trying to achieve gender equality and dissolve stereotypes, then why are we supporting women behind the scenes and not also on screen? The younger generations are going to be more drawn to the actors they are seeing and not just the people who played a behind the scenes role. In order to show the truth and have both genders on equal footing, which can dissolve harsh stereotypes about women in film, then there either needs to be more media coverage on women film directors or a different character approach to women in film. As Kaylin stated, women are often shown as weak in the film industry. Now it is no secret that gender inequality has been prominent in the arts world. Most recently, in the music industry, Grammy award-winning artist Taylor Swift has really mainstreamed her battles. In an interview aired on CBS Sunday Morning, Swift talks about her masters being sold without her knowledge to another label. One of my favorite parts of this interview is when she says, there is a different vocabulary for men and women in the industry. When asked to give an example, Swift says, when a man does something, it is strategic, but with a woman, it is calculated. A man can only react a woman can only overreact. Women are often put into this category of problematic and or having behavioral challenges. Women are often portrayed in films as victims, a typical representation. The fight to challenge those typical roles of women are often hard and not many women are willing to put their career at risk. Or when trying to challenge these stereotypes, they are met with a perception of being problematic. Cue in the language of react and overreact. Women should be able to react to these stereotypes and fight these typical roles and not be labeled as problematic. In their section titled Unruly Women, there are specifically two films that were made from the women's point of view. 
one story was told of an adult woman falling in love with another woman and thus coming out as lesbian. The other story was drawn on personal experiences of domestic abuse and shame. This film, like the previous, was scrutinized for its storytelling. Both producers tell stories of how established persons in the industry have told them that their or their co-workers' careers would be destroyed if they pursued their projects. The immediate question that came to mind was why? Why does a woman have to be bullied into changing what they experience? Women should not be afraid to speak up for the equality or be afraid to lose their careers or be labeled over what is right. With waves of feminism like women's suffrage and the Me Too movement, I still for the life of me cannot figure out why gender inequality exists. Hi. For the video portion of our assignment, we found multiple scholarly examples that fit into our choice of topic, including a TED Talk hosted by Naomi McDougall Jones, a well-known American actress, writer, and producer. The first statistic brought up in the TED Talk is the effect movies have on the audiences that watch them. When the movie Brave was released, the number of women participating in archery skyrocketed. By this logic, movies create an effect on the audiences that watch them, and because Brave centered around a female protagonist, the response rippled amongst women and young girls. Jones goes on to break down the facts even further. 95% of all the movies you've ever seen were directed by men. Regarding film school, women and men graduate at the same rate of 50%. Of that percentile, 18% go on to be micro-budget directors. 12% become indie film directors, and a minuscule 5% make it to the studio film movies. What the average patron can take away from this is the simple fact that the majority of the film's audiences will see were produced by men. When it comes to the point, Jones was able to discover the truth of women in the film industry. Films by and about women make more money. Jones was able to find this evidence as released in an official statement written by the Washington Post showing that films that feature women make 23 cents more on every dollar than films that don't. Jones even further proves her point by collecting the ROI, which is returns on investment. Data showing that women in the director, producer, screenwriter, and even lead actor yielded a higher return on investment. If you don't believe me, use the formula for determining the average return on investment for yourself. Worldwide gross box office revenue subtracted by estimated marketing costs as a percent of production budget plus estimated tax credit divided by production budget. After having looked at all this data, it may seem that women aren't doing too bad for themselves. But imagine how much higher the ROI would be if the number for the women in the film industry didn't reach as low as 5% on studio films. I suppose the key takeaway for this section would have to be the facts as they present themselves. Women in the film industry aren't treated as equals. And given the opportunity of equality in the industry, we as people could get to experience more diverse movies with greater returns on the investments they create. Even though it is 2020, gender stereotypes still do take place. Nobody deserves to be at any disadvantage for their gender. However, this is something that has carried on since the beginning of time. While the world has been moving towards equality, which we have seen more and more recently, it has still not reached it in the world of cinema. Whether it is not being taken seriously or not receiving the same amount of pay, women are definitely at a disadvantage. As you will learn throughout this lesson plan, and as you have learned throughout this lecture, despite the current era we live in, gender stereotypes unfortunately still do exist in the world of cinema. Above, we have discussed many examples earlier in this lecture, such as Milan Zoe's difficult time and experiences of being a producer on set, Taylor Swift's struggle in the Hollywood industry, Naomi McDougall Jones's time in the film industry, and Maria Jansen's article about gender equality in Swedish film. As you can see, it's not only something that's happening in America, but also throughout the whole world. So some of these examples give you an idea of what women go through on a daily basis just in their work industry because they're simply a different gender. As Silas stated, this lesson plan has shown the struggles that women go through to find work, meaning that it's not always easy for them to find work just because they are at a disadvantage. Men have a slighter advantage over them in getting jobs, obtaining jobs, especially when you're not an actor. I mean, like the demand may be, the, the demand for women actors might be equal, but for someone as a producer or someone who's a director or working the film or writers, men could have a, an advantage of that. It also shows the lack of funding that female led projects receive just because they're led by females. That people who are providing the money think, think that it won't be as good just because it is a female leading it. And it also talks about the suppression of feminine topics that in film that are suppressed globally just because it's a topic that has to do with women or a feminine topic, 
it is often looked at negatively. I don't want to sound too repetitive, but this lesson will provide a new perspective to you. It'll show you that it is still a major issue today in art, and I hope that you are able to take something from it. Thank you.